So as I'm sure, well first of all, I'd like to say it's my pleasure to be here, not only to be here this week in Ischia, but also to have this opportunity to share my thoughts with you, in this case about Quick Step. And as you know from the other lectures you've heard today, the theme today is how we can be competitive using basic figures. So first we have to agree on what we mean by being competitive in quick step. Some people may have a different idea about what competitive means in terms of quick step. So is it, for example, the couple who goes around the floor in the fastest time? Is it the couple who covers the greatest distance or the one who jumps highest in the air? I think you know the answer to that. If you didn't know before you came here this week, then you surely will know by now. Because I've been here to listen to all of the other lecturers, and whether they've been talking about Latin or ballroom, it seems to me they've all had a common uh, goal, if you like, that what we want to see on the competition floor to make the best dancing is quality dancing. Quality in quick step. So how do we make good quality quick step? To make a competitive quick step. To understand the answer to that, we need to understand what is the quick step? What is the character of quick step? Well, quick step is a swing dance, just like the waltz and the foxtrot are swing dances. In fact, all of the ballroom dances are swing dances, with the exception, of course, of tango, but then tango is not really a ballroom dance. It's a Latin American dance. Where does it come from? Originally Argentina, it's a Latin American country. So it really it's included in the ballroom section by accident, by the way that ballroom dancing developed. Tango happened to be around at that time and it got included along with the other ballroom dances. It's not really a ballroom dance in that sense. So all of the ballroom dances are based on swing action because that is suggested when we listen to the type of music that we dance those ballroom dances to. And especially quick step music, if you listen to traditional type quick step music, originally it came from large orchestras that were playing a swinging, what they call swing type music. And therefore that lends us to dance a swing type action when we dance quick step just as we do in Waltz and Foxtrot. So if we agree that quick step is basically a swing dance, then it follows that we want to include in our quick step and to make a good quality quick step, we need swing type figures. And in fact, all of the basic figures, and when we say basic figures, generally what we mean are the figures that are included in the written technique, those that are in the technique book. All of those basic figures in the technique book in quick step are swing type figures. And indeed, we can be competitive by dancing these figures if we dance them in the correct way, with the correct technique, with good quality, and that includes with power. Just because they're basic figures does not mean they're not powerful. However, I would not suggest that you make your competition quick step routine only based on swing figures. You could do, wouldn't be wrong to do so, but you wouldn't be showing all of the aspects that make up a quick step in today's ballroom dancing. Quick step, like every other dance, has developed over the years and yes, the character has changed, it has developed, shall we say, over the years and there are different types of quick step choreography, different types of figures are now included as part of that character. And generally these fall into two groups, two types of figures, the swing figures and the non-swing figures, we could say. So we have figures like scatter chassis, pendulums, woodpeckers, etc., etc., which are not swing type figures, but do enhance the quick step. So I always say it's a question of balance. The balance of the choreography should be that it includes some swing type figures, some non-swing type figures. And 
you should frequently change as you go through your routine from one type of figure to another. another. Maybe eight bars of swing and then eight bars of non-swing, returning to swing type and so on and so on as you go through your routine. But today, because of the theme, we're focusing on the basic figures and that means we're focusing on the swing action. So I'm going to take some, a selection of swing type figures and talk about how you can dance them with the correct technique and make them powerful and therefore competitive and in character with the dance. So we're going to start with something simple like an open natural turn and a running finish. And clearly this type of action is based on swing action. Slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow, and so on. We always talk about swing, but do you know exactly what is meant by swing? We often refer to it as pendulum swing. I think you all know what a pendulum is, but are you all clear about how a pendulum relates to what we do when we talk about a swing action in a ballroom dance? A pendulum is a weight that is swinging around some fixed point. So imagine if you like a heavy weight like a cannonball or something like that attached to a piece of rope and that weight is swinging on the end of the rope from this fixed point. That is your basic pendulum swing. So when we talk about swinging a natural turn or something like that, are you clear about where is your fixed point, where is your weight and how they're relating to each other within that natural turn? In case you're not, let me explain. The, the um, weight, which is on the end of a piece of rope that's swinging from side to side, that represents your center of gravity, your body weight's center of gravity. So starting point is, do you know where your center of gravity is? Now I often ask that question when I'm teaching, and Latin as well as ballroom, because center of gravity awareness is very important for all forms of dance, not only ballroom. It applies not only to when we're swinging with a pendulum swing, it applies to even when we're dancing a rumba walk. We need to know where our center of gravity is. In case you're not clear about your center of gravity, it's here. Not here, not here. When asked this question in a lesson, I asked the couple to point to their center of gravity. I get all sorts of positions pointed out, ranging from up here to the correct position which is down here. It is lower than many people think. It is at this point. It is at the point at which you would need to hold the body in order to balance it. Imagine I take your body and it's lying horizontally and I have to balance your body on my hand. My hand would need to hold you here in order that your legs and your upper body weight were equally balanced. If my hand were here, for example, then the weight of your legs would take you out of balance in that direction. It's very important that you're aware as dancers where your center of gravity is. So when we talk about swinging the body weight, that weight on the end of the pendulum is this part here. That's the part that you're going to swing through when you dance a natural turn or whatever swinging figure. The running finish, this is the part that is swinging through to make that pendulum swing. So if that's the weight of the pendulum, where is the fixed point? The fixed point is an imaginary point, it is not real, because it is up there somewhere above my head. So we have to imagine that fixed point and this weight swinging around it like that. If I was simply standing on the spot and swinging like this, then yes, you could say my head is the swing fixed point because I'm not moving anywhere but when we dance we move the weight from foot to foot so the point is higher because the head is moving so that fixed point is up there as the center of gravity is swinging below it so that's what we mean when we talk about pendulum swing and that's what we must apply to our figures when we're dancing waltz foxtrot quick step and even Viennese waltz. So coming back to our example, I had an open natural turn and a running finish.
finish. And you can see how my center is swinging under in that pendulum-like manner. And as a result of that, you see the shape that develops in the upper body. This we call sway. So that shape that we call sway is the result of the pendulum swing. That's important to understand that, that the sway, the shape happens as the result of the pendulum swing. It's not something we have to put in. We should not say, I now need to put in a sway to the right and do something with the upper body to make that sway. The sway comes because this is swinging under, there's my fixed point, and the result is you have the sway to the right at the end of that swing. Now that applies whether it's a basic natural turn or an open natural turn, the swing and the shape would be similar. So there's my swing, and whether I close the foot or whether I pass the foot to make an open natural, I've got that sway to the right as a result of that pendulum swing. Running finish, now the center is swinging across sideways like so. There's the fixed point, there's the weight, swing, sway to the left is the result. Do you know what the word momentum means? I think it probably translates to Italian, does it? Momentum? You know that word? Yeah? Momentum. See, I speak Italian. Momentum. In English, momentum. It means the power of that swinging or moving weight. So as that weight is in motion, that weight has energy, and we call that energy momentum. The heavier the weight, the more energy it has. The faster the weight is moving, the more energy it has. And in quick step, we're moving or swinging our weight at very high speeds. If I dance that at normal speed, slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow, and so on, there's a lot of energy in my body weight. Now imagine you're driving your car at 30 kilometers per hour in a straight line, and you want to turn the corner, not a problem. If you're driving your car at 100 kilometers per hour, and you want to turn that corner, it becomes a little more difficult. And the faster you go, the more difficult it becomes to change direction. And so it is with the body weight. When our body weight is swinging at full power, it has a lot of momentum in quick step. So we cannot suddenly change the direction of the body weight. We cannot be swinging down the floor at full power and reach the corner and suddenly turn 90 degrees to go to the new line of dance. So the point here is we have to be aware of the direction of our body weight. And we must allow the body weight always to flow in a natural direction. So if I dance this figure, this, let's say I do open natural running finish and I want to dance two of them. Open natural running finish, open natural running finish, and so on. Now that's okay because I allowed my body weight to continue flowing in one direction, albeit curving around the corner. It would not be so good if I started that figure here and now suddenly I've got to change direction to the new line of dance. My weight cannot flow in a natural direction and therefore I will lose power, I will lose fluidity in my movement. So it is very important that I place my figures on the floor in such a way that I can allow that swing to naturally continue. So if I start that group here, I'm swinging down the line of dance, now I can curve it around the corner, new line of dance, not a problem, I can dance with full power and with flow and fluidity. So let me take another example now. I want to go on to a natural spin turn. Natural spin turn. Maybe a chassis into a quick open or something of that nature. If you remember Len Armstrong's lecture, he talked about a natural spin turn in the waltz. And he said how important it was here that the man got his weight 100% over the ball of the right foot 
and not here in between the feet. So this is important for the man to get his weight completely over his right foot, firstly for his own posture and his presentation, but also for what his partner is required to do. The lady, when she dances a spin turn, is doing this. What we want from the lady is for her to extend her shape in that direction. She can only do that if I allow her to by getting my weight completely on the right foot. And maybe I can show you that more clearly if I have a partner. And Len did say that I could borrow his partner. So, can I have Denise? <laughs> Very kind of you, Len. Thank you. We'll take it in walls for the moment so that we have more time to show. Here, the extension, the breathing in Denise's posture. So you can look at it as her head extending in that direction. The distance between the man and lady's head will be increasing. I like to call this breathing. We're breathing as a couple. Just do that once more. One and breathe. And so on. Oh. Now that's the same whether it's a waltz or a quick step. If we dance that natural spin turn in quick step, we have three slows. So a basic timing and slow, quick, quick, slow, 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 and something. We have time to show the breathing. And this is important in quick step that we're not only interested in dancing always at maximum speed, we need to be able to dance at slow speed and show this breathing action as well. Now I'm still on the subject of the flow of the body weight, like I talked about on the open natural and the running finish. So let's look at this natural spin turn and see what's going to happen after I've done that step. If I'm going into a chassis, as we just did, into a quick open reverse or something of that nature, I will use my upper body weight, and when I say upper body weight, that includes my head weight, by the way. So I will use my upper body weight to take it in to the new direction. At the same time that Denise is still doing her breathing, her extending in that direction. Can we do that once more please, Denise? We do it slowly, we're doing quick step now, but as she is extending in that direction, I'm starting to go into the new direction in preparation for my chassis. I'm using the upper body weight to prepare for the new direction of the following figure. That's if I were going into a chassis diagonally centre, for example. Now let's take or compare that to another example if I were going to do a turning lock to the right. So a natural spin turn, turning lock to the right. So what you see now on that natural spin turn is a different shape because I had a different figure to follow the spin turn. So in this case, slow, 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 I now had a shape to the right with my upper body because that was the preparation to lead the turning lock to the right. So the shape that the upper body has will be different depending on the figure you're going to follow with so that the body weight is allowed to flow into the next figure and to get maximum power into the next figure. So if I'd have done the spin turn with the same shape as the basic one, like that, and then try to do my turning lock, it's possible to do it, but it's not going to blend, it's not going to flow naturally, and I'm certainly not going to get full power. So that's upper body weight allowing me to flow. Also important is the direction that that upper body weight, or the whole body weight in fact, is moving. In this case, we dance from our natural spin turn, we went down the line of dance and finished diagonally center in promenade position. That is the natural amount of turn for that figure. So I know when I dance this part of the spin turn that on the next part, my body weight is going to go down that line of dance. 
to prepare for that, I want to have this shape in the body and this angle in the body. That's important that I'm there to allow one, two, three, four, the weight to move in that direction. So you'll notice that the shape I had and the direction I had at the end of that spin turn was not the normal amount of turn. If I'd advanced the full amount of turn on this spin, I would now be here with my body square to the line of dance. And if I do that, watch what happens when I dance the turning lock. My weight is now going diagonally to the wall. But I still want to finish diagonally center, so I'm going to do that. And if I do that at full speed, I've got a sudden change of direction from there to there, 90 degrees. That's like driving the car around to 90 degree bend at 100 kilometers per hour. It's not going to work. It's not going to be successful. So you shape the body in that way. You allow the weight to go down the line of dance, and it will naturally finish diagonally center, and you can dance that with full power. But you say, my next group goes down the line of dance from promenade position into this kind of figure. I want to go line of dance. OK, then you approach it differently. Then you start the natural spin turn in an entirely different direction. And you make the amount of turn you want so that this now flows to finish line of dance. So I still have not made any sudden changes in the direction of my body weight. I've carefully apportioned the amount of turn and the direction so that it's able to flow in the most natural way, the most efficient way, and therefore allow me to get maximum power. Very often we might put an extra spin in that combination. So instead of simply dancing slow, slow, slow into the turning lock, we might add in an extra quick, quick. For example, slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow, slow, oh, one, two, three, four, like so. And that's fine, but the same thing applies. We must think about how we're placing it on the floor. We must think about the amount of turn we're making here. Quick, quick, slow, slow. In this case, I would need to have this shape, this direction, so that the weight can flow that way and naturally finish to the line of dance. I'm getting a bit hot now. <laughs> Right, let's take another example. We're going to dance into a quick open reverse now. No, closed. Oh. Once more. So we were moving diagonally center with a basic lockstep, albeit with syncopated timing. Slow, quick and quick, slow, quick and quick. I danced the basic quick open reverse turn. Slow, slow, cool, quick, quick, slow with a reverse pivot. A telespin. Cool, quick, quick, slow and quick, quick into a throwaway over sway line. Again, the combination allows the weight to naturally flow, it allows me to put in maximum power. They're all basic figures. Telespin, okay, you could argue that's a development of a telemark if you like. Still basically a basic figure. Block step. Quick open reverse. Reverse pivot. Telespin. And the throwaway over sway line. That could make a very nice competitive group. Again, we want to get maximum power from it. We must use the body weight with a swinging action. Here's the lock step. I'm going to use this downswing here to get a powerful swinging action there into the quick open reverse. Now, I haven't talked much about footwork at this point because I'm assuming that most of you know the correct footwork. But I do want to point out a couple 
of common errors that sometimes occur. On the quick open reverse, we have rather an unusual situation here because we have two steps in a row that are both down. This one is down, this one is also down, and we then rise onto the right foot. That's very unusual because normally following a downswing the next step immediately rises. And the reason for this is because the quick open reverse really starts with the left foot forward step. If you consider a feather step in the foxtrot into a quick open reverse, the quick open reverse is starting with the man's left foot forward, isn't it? Slow and quick, quick and so on. But when we dance it in quick step, could be from the lock, could be from a chassis, we have this step preceding that left foot forward step. We have two slows, we have two steps down because we start our downswing at the end of that chassis. So there's the downswing, this one is down, I've got to stay down for that one before rising onto the toe of the right foot. So where this often goes wrong, is the gentleman does the downswing here, but then he does a toe on the left foot when that should be a heel. If you've done the toe on that foot, it means that your rise has been too early, and it means you're not going to get full power into the swing of that quick open reverse. So you have to control the timing of the rise carefully here. Here's the downswing, but don't rise. Stay down, complete that step with the heel, then it becomes heel toe because we're now rising with our normal swing type rise. This uh, lecture, by the way, is a lecture with what is referred to as a stage. That means I speak to you for 30 minutes and then you have 20 minutes within which to put into practice what I've been speaking about. I have now been speaking for 30 minutes. <laughs> You're probably quite pleased to hear that. <laughs> Which means that you now have the chance to come onto the floor and try out some of these ideas for yourself. So if you haven't changed your shoes, please change your shoes now, Domen. <laughs> and come onto the floor. It was 30, wasn't it? It wasn't 29 or 31. <laughs> so we're going to start with the first example I gave, which is the open natural and running finish. I would like you to start moving diagonally to wall, and I want everybody to move in the same direction. So even if you're on this side of the floor, we're going to use this line of dance, okay? So where's my partner? What have you done with my partner, Len? I would like you all to stand in this direction, in promenade position. We're going to move diagonally to the wall with the open natural, slow, quick, quick, and then our running finish. And we are going to take a first running finish to promenade position. A running finish can stay closed or it can open to promenade position. After doing this once, we're going to repeat it with another one. So that means the first one first running finish will open to promenade position and the second time we will keep it closed. But we just do the one to start with, finish in promenade position please. Are you ready? After four. One, two, three, four. Slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, stop. And you should now be in promenade position on that line of dance. Are we there? Yeah, I think we are. Very good. Okay, back to beginning. This time we're going to continue with the repeat open natural turn running finish, but the second run and finish remain closed, please. After four. One, two, three, four. Slow, quick, quick, slow. Promenade. Slow, quick, quick, slow. Cool, quick, stop. Good. Okay.
So the steps, the direction, I think, are now clear. I want you now to focus on the action. And remember, the main point here is the pendulum swing. So I want you to picture in your mind the fixed point of the pendulum here, somewhere up above your head. I want you to be aware of your centre of gravity. Would you all point, please, to your centres of gravity? I want you all to be aware of that point when you dance this figure, and I want you to feel the swinging of that centre of gravity. Okay, so fixed point, centre of gravity, pendulum swing, here we go. One, two, three, four. Slow, quick, quick, swing. Quick, quick, slow. Quick, quick, swing. Quick, quick, slow. Good. Now, as I said in the quick open reverse, technical details such as footwork, direction, rise, all these kind of things must be in place. These things must be correct in order for us to get the best quality of action and also to maximize power. So, for example, when you dance this step of the running finish, gentlemen, make sure, please, that you dance that footwork as toe and not toe heel. Hopefully you're all aware of the correct footwork. Step one as man, left foot back, toe, toe, toe heel. Do not lower your heel on that first step. The reason for that is because of the speed of the swing. If you would lower the heel on the left foot, your weight would be going backwards for too long and then it would be difficult to suddenly change it for the forward swing. So in quick step, we always dance toe on the left foot because we want to quick convert that backward swing into forward movement. That's why we don't lower the hip. Okay, we'll do that once more and then we'll try some music. N next time. After four, one, two, three, four. Slow, quick, quick, toe. Quick, quick, slow. Quick, quick, toe. Quick, quick, slow. Good. Music this time, please. So can you feel how that's working? Using the senses of gravity, using the principle of pendulum swing, providing you dance it in the correct direction and you allow the body weight to flow, you can get a lot of power out of what is really a very simple basic step, an open natural and a running finish. And that really is the principle of what we're trying to do with all of our swing figures in quick step. So now we're going to try the next example, which is the natural spin turn, first of all, without the turning lock. So we're just going to do this, basic natural spin turn, and maybe we'll put on a chassis like that, because I want you to get that feeling of breathing that we talked about on the fifth step, four, five there, of the lady extending in that direction, and to prepare to go into the chassis, gentlemen, you're going to take your upper body weight to your left, and therefore we get that extension of the space between the man and the lady. Uh, we'll take it from step four for practice. So, gentlemen, backing line of dance, please, this position. We're just going to do four, five, six, and I want you to feel that breathing action. Ready, and slow, slow, slow. We're doing it very slowly at the moment, almost waltz speed really, just to get the feeling. Same again please. Ready, and slow, slow, slow. Okay. The angle of your head is also important, gentlemen. I'm seeing some of you do this. This is the wrong way. Four, five, and your focus is here. Now that means that this space is close and the head weight direction is not good. I want the angle of your head to be there. You should be looking towards your left hand, not here close to the lady's right ear. Okay, so we try that again, please. 
just four, five, six. Ready, and four. Now take your headway left and prepare for the chassis. Okay, we'll do that from the beginning of the natural spin turn, and we'll add on the chassis moving diagonally center after the spin turn, okay? So diagonally wall to begin. After four, one, two, three, four. Slow, quick, quick, slow, slow now chassis, slow, quick, quick, slow. Okay. Yes, we'll have a little look this time. After four, same thing. Ready, one, two, three, four. Slow, quick, quick, slow, 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 and chassis and something. Okay. You happy with that? What do you mean back? That's the floor. <laughs> Okay, what we're going to do now is change that to the turning lock to right. So from our same spin turn, slow, 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 this time I want this shape to the right gentleman in your upper body in order to prepare for one, two, three, four, turning to the right. You should finish in promenade position diagonally to center. That's the natural amount of turn. From the beginning of the spin turn, please. Stop, no, no stop. Don't forget to shape to the right on the last step of the spin turn. One, two, three, four. Slow. Quick, quick, slow. Shape now. One, two, three, four. We'll have a look at that, please, because we can't really see you when we're dancing. After four. One, two, three, four. Slow, quick, quick, slow, shape, and a one, two, three, four. Yes? Could we try that to music, please? Uh, usually the problem is that the gentleman makes that shape too late. So typically, slow, 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 the gentleman is still square at this point, and then he'll put the shape in as he starts the turning lock. In this case, the problem is the opposite. Maybe because I've explained that that's what you should do, some of you are actually doing it too early. So what I'm seeing is four, five, you're already swaying to the right here on step five of the spin turn. That's too early. At that point, we still need to be left. Four, five. As you start that step, my head weight is still to the left. It's only as we do six, that's when it changes to prepare for the turning lock. So you could dance that figure in that way, but also competitively, we sometimes put in an extra spin, an extra quick kick, for two reasons really. One, because it adds in a bit of extra speed. So slow, quick, quick, slow. I'm adding in an extra spin now, quick, quick, and now continuing with the slow, slow of the spin turn into the turning lock. So that's one reason to add uh, the extra speed of that spin, but also musically it phrases very nicely with that extra spin because it makes a total of four bars. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. We've got a nice four bar phrase there when we put that extra spin in. So that's what I'd like you to try this time. But in order to do that, I want you to start in a different direction. This time I'd like you to start, well no, actually we can do it in the same direction, but we're now going to be dancing it around the corner and not down the line of dance. So we'll still start here, regardless of where you are in the room, but bear in mind, we're approaching that corner. So this will be our direction. Slow, quick, quick, slow. Quick, quick, slow, slow. And this is my new line of dance. Imagine that the floor goes there, out into the sea. One, two, three, four. We're finished diagonally of that new line of dance. Okay? 
So we're starting here, please, with the extra spin this time. We'll do it with you this first time. After four, one, two, three, four, slow. Quick, quick spin. Quick, quick, slow. Now, a one, two, three, four. Yep. And with the music, this time, please. Yeah, we'll watch, I think. Who's so tall that they're knocking the lights? <laughs> I don't think it was me. <laughs> it's not Stefano. <laughs> so I think you can feel how that is really quite fast. We're generating quite a lot of power and a lot of rotational speed on what is again quite a basic combination of figures really. Thank you. So I'd now like you to try uh, the other example I showed you using the quick open reverse and we're going to start in this corner with a forward lock just a single lock but syncopated timing so we have slow quick and quick and repeat that lock slow quick and quick and now a basic quick open reverse turn slow slow quick quick pivot reverse pivot using a slow count at the end of the quick open into a telespin quick quick slow and quick quick throw away over sway line from the corner please We're stepping forward outside partner to begin the lockstep. I'm not trying. No, no, no music. <laughs> I think that's a bit ambitious. No music yet. <laughs> stepping forward outside partner with a slow, slow, quick and quick. Repeat the lock. Slow, quick and quick. Quick open reverse. Slow, slow, quick, quick, pivot, telespin, and throw away over sway line. All right, back to the beginning. <laughs> so we go nice and slowly, but without stopping this time. Try and get it flowing. One, two, three, four. Slow, quick and quick, slow, quick and quick, slow, slow, quick, quick, slow. Quick, quick, slow, and quick, quick, one, two, three, four. A word about direction. I've emphasized the importance of the body weight being able to continue to flow in one direction, no sudden changes of direction. So this whole group is moving diagonally center on the first part, the lock steps and the start of the quick open reverse. This is all going diagonally center. Now the weight is moving down the line of dance. Even though we're pivoting here, that does not affect the direction of movement of the body weight. That is still moving down the line of dance. Down the line of dance, all the way into the throwaway oversway. So there's only a small change in direction from diagonally center to line of dance. Therefore, it's possible for the weight to flow. Use the downswing here at the end of the second lock. Use that downswing to get the power, the swing into the quick open, get the weight going in that direction. So a little bit faster this time. Try to feel that flow of the body weight, please. After four. One, two, three, four. Slow, quick and quick, slow. Quick and quick, slow, slow. Quick, quick, slow. Quick, quick, slow. And quick, quick, one, two, three, four. If you take four slows on that throw away, you'll find it takes a nice eight bar breaks in total. With the music, please.
Yeah. <laughs> now, I gave you a, a particular count for this group. You could adjust that to a degree for your personal feeling. So, for example, the telespin I said, quick, quick, slow, and quick, quick, slow. You might prefer to dance that as quick, 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 slow, for example. But basically, that is the count. And the idea is that this throwaway oversway is very slow and is therefore a contrast of speed to what has come before it. So we have high speed on that first part, we have very slow speed at the end, and if you take four slows to slowly develop that throwaway oversway, you will find that takes you to the end of an eight bar phrase. So as well as having the contrast of speed and power, we also have a nice musical phrase there as well. So let's try that one more time with music, please. Excuse me, Mr. David Sikamul, five minutes, please. No, one minute. <laughs> Thank you. Please take your seats. Oh, well. Thank you. Thank you to my assistant. Thank you.